become more familiar with normalizing flows, we will here now try to implement one for our uh, case of image modeling. So uh, the idea is that we have an implementation, go through step by step, what are the different aspects we have to consider when we do a normalizing flows, which flows, so which invertible function can we define and implement and so on. In general, what we have then as setup is that our P of X here on the left side are then these images. So uh, we have samples of P of X and want to model the distribution over the whole um, MNIST data set. While on the right, we will have then here a latent distribution P of set of the same dimensions as the input. So we also have then 28 times 28 latent uh, dimensions. What we will do then is we first define here a lightning module and then I can show you what we actually have to do for training, validation, test. Um, however, when before, this is something you have already seen in the science probably, is namely that we will use the bits per dimension score as a metric. So BPD is a very common score here for likelihood models, especially for normalizing flows. And this is because it basically is motivated from our uh, information theory perspective so how many bits would I actually need to encode a specific point in a model distribution? This is then, for example, how, how much data would I have to store to store the whole data set if I know my model? Um, and where you, for example, then see the more likely point is in your, data, uh, in your distribution, the lower number of bits you need. And therefore, if we model that, it's basically uh, we try to minimize the bits per dimension score. Same time here we divide by all other dimensions. So we divide by channel size, height and width. This is because we want to also have a comparison between different scales of images. So if you would have a very high resolution scale image, then you could still actually compare the bits per dimension score. Also may, uh, keep in mind that here we have not binarized images, but we have now values between zero and 255. Actually, you will see that also discrete values in normalizing flows is something we have to consider. First of all, how is a normalizing flow then implemented? What we have, we have a prior here, which is basically then saying, okay, our prior distribution is here Gaussian, and we have a list of flows. So these are now the invertible functions we will apply. The important samples we will look at later. This is for now not important. If I now say encode, encode means, okay, I've given the x, let's put it into z. We calculate here, we just run each flow one by one over z and return z then as the final encoding in the latent distribution. However, you see also something else, namely the LDJ. This is this log determinant Jacobian term. So this is, if we go up, this is exactly this term here on the right. If I now have multiple flows, I of course have here a sum over those. And these, as you remember, uh, represent our change in volume. So this derivative of how much do I scale my volume and therefore have to adjust actually my probability height. This we can use then in our likelihood function. So here we given a batch of images, what are the likelihoods of each? We can just encode the image calculate the log probability of z in our prior, sum these two, take the negative log likelihood and calculate the bits per dimension score and simply return the BPD. We also have here a different addition return nl. This is in case we would just want to return the log likelihood. I will come to that later. If we now would want to sample, sampling is actually also quite simple. So we start with z from our prior distribution. So we sample a z from our Gaussian, and when we just go reversed all over flow, so in the other direction, and reverse each flow, so meaning that we actually take the inverse. We will see how you can inverse a flow. It really depends on how you define the function f. Some of them are usually very simple to invert, and this is also the idea you have usually, that you want a flow which can be both run efficiently in the forward direction and in the backward direction. As optimizers, you can use any possible optimizer. So here we use adder. And during the training, you just get a batch, calculate the likelihood, and this is your loss. So you basically train again on negative log likelihood here just with its per dimension score. The validation step is the same. The test step you see is a bit different. 
We will go into detail afterwards why it is actually different, because that might be now too far. We now come to another topic, which is especially important for images, namely dequantization. So normalizing flows rely on the change of variables, right? So this uh, formula is actually defined for continuous variables, so it assumes that x and z are both continuous. However, if we are now using images, images represent discrete points in a continuous space. Right, so we have either pixel value 0 or 1, but we don't have any pixel value 0 0.55 and so on. What this actually means is that our images represent single points in a latent space. So for example, we have here these gray uh, circles represent here values that we have, and we would, for example, have over those different probability distribution. Right, so for example, here then the sum over the probability distribution of 0, 1, 2, 3 should be 1. If we now take a normalizing flow, this one actually uh, assumes that 0, 1, 2, 3 are in continuous space, and that means that instead of the sum of the probabilities must be 1, we have an integral to be 1. Right? So this is our usual uh, normalizing flow assumption. And there you see the problem namely that the integral assumes here also a volume, namely a size, which we put in for each of the discrete points in space, in continuous space. This means that the normalizing flow can actually model these as a delta peak. So delta peaks are those distributions which basically have a zero width, however infinite height, so that volume afterwards is one. And this is what the normalizing flow can do then in this situation. So I try to visualize it here with a green volume, that basically the normalizing flows go uh, higher and higher and really peak maximums around exactly 0, exactly 1, exactly 2, exactly 3, while still keeping a volume of 1. However, if we now evaluate the likelihood for the point 0, we can get actually infinity out. And there you see, okay, that is actually not what we want, and therefore we don't model the discrete distribution, we model a discrete delta peak distribution in continuous space. So this is not what we want. What we would want is that we can actually check the point zero in the late space and then get back also a reasonable likelihood estimate which follows then a sum here. One alternative is of course then to try to push this into a discrete space, so say both x and z is in discrete space. This however comes with a lot of different difficulties. The easier and most common way is dequantization. Dequantization has been the idea to say okay Zero actually doesn't mean zero. However, we can say, okay, the value zero is represented with a probability distribution, with a density between zero and one. So that our input here, our zero is nothing else than a distribution between zero and one. So I can sample from there. We have one to two would be then the distribution to represent the value one, two to three for the value two, and so on. The benefit of this is that the normalizing flow cannot just take this delta peaks, right? Because now we have distribution it has to model. Therefore, it would have to model the distribution of 0 and 2, 1 to model the value 0. And the volume of this probability density for the value 0 is 1. Therefore, in the end, we actually come to a lower bound. So, what do we have specifically? Um, what we do now is that p of x is the expectation of some noise, so u will be then our noise, which is always between 0 and 1, and we add it to x. So this is how then, for example, 0 becomes distribution between 0 and 1, 1 to 1 and 2, 2 to 3, 2 and 3, and so on. We just use the standard then way of writing it, so as you remember from variation and theorems of the VAEs, you can write it then as you sample a noise, p of x plus u, because now we model the continuous version of the image and divide it here by q of u given x. Usually what we first assume is that this term here is a uniform distribution, therefore actually this one would fall out here. If you would now put that directly into a flow, it also doesn't work. Why not? Because uh, our values are between 0 and 256 then, while our prior distribution is between well, usually between then something like minus 2 and 2, and uh, out there, so be beyond these uh, bounds. And of course, the normalizing flow gets expensive. Uh, the Gaussian distribution sorry, has very low likelihood. And therefore, if you would just push 
values of 256 during the first iteration through the flow, assuming that the flow uh, invertible functions don't change anything, are just identities, then you would have extremely low likelihood and directly diverge. To do it better, we can take this distribution between 0 and 256 and map it into a similar Gaussian shape. This we do here with the inverse of sigmoid, although I don't want to go too much into detail, so if you are interested you can see it, but we also visualize it below. So what exactly are we doing here in a dequantization? So dequantization can be also then realized as flow, we've given a discrete input image and try to make it a continuous one. So in the forward pass we have a, a function called dequantization, so dequantization takes which is, which is here then our image, adds a random noise between 0 and 1, and then basically we push it uh, to a values between 0 and 1, apply an inverse sigmoid, which then gets us a similar of Gaussian shape. And if we want to inverse it, first inverse the sigmoid, scale up, and then take basically, uh, we round it, round the values down, so that 0 0.0. 6, 1 is again then mapped to 0. Usually what you then want to check for flows is are they invertible. So given now for example the input image, we want to dequantize it into continuous values, can we then quantize again these continuous values to uh, our original image. Usually these tests should all say yes, however dequantization we see that it right now fails. So uh, exactly for one pixel, so in the whole image, for one pixel it fails, and there we had a value of 0, however, if we quantize it again, it gets the value of 1. Why that? Well, because we have a sigmoid, and at some point our numerical stabilities, accuracies are going down. And as we have only 32 bits, there can be such issues, however, this is not a big deal, so you could either then uh, map these tensors first to a double, uh, so to a 64 uh, bit. However, it's not really needed because the difference between 0 and 1 is very low. Therefore, we can still uh, assume it here. Let's also visualize the dequantization distribution. So what does that exactly mean? To dequantize it. Um, so what we effectively do is that the values of 0 are then represented by this volume here, so which actually goes to infinity. From this volume, you can imagine if I have a zero pixel in my image, I sample from this distribution every time I run my model, uh, run my image through um, through the flow. The same with the one, two, three, and so on. And you see that actually the widths of these volumes are getting smaller and smaller. But this is because the height is also scaling up. Right? So you see, this is kind of uh, like a Gaussian shape. However, we split this Gaussian into segments, and each segment here has the same volume while representing one of our integers. So then our integer, if we have a three, we sample here between something like minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.0. And this is how we can actually then push an uh, image into continuous space without a problem. This gives us here a lower bound. As I already said, so if we model now log p of x, as you know from VAE, we need to push the log inside, which then gives us a lower bound, namely the evidence lower bound. This is as we have a Jensen inequality, which comes here with the log pushing into the expectation. Well, um, this is a less likely uh, issue for normal learning flows, uh, because you see that we don't have the issue of also learning a separate decoder and uh, so on, we can also actually tighten this bound even more. So as in VAEs, what you could actually do is you can take, instead of saying here just the log and having then always one sample, you can find something in between, namely you can take important sampling. So important sampling is when, see so on the left we have our term here, on the right is the Jensen inequality, while in between there is that you could take m samples in here and average them before taking the log. If m goes to infinity, we actually obtain uh, again our exact likelihood here. Of course, you can take m to infinity, 
However, you see that during testing, we actually then take more samples here. So this is why in the test step uh, above here, if I go up, you have seen that I actually take exactly this important sampling, which allows us to tighten the bound more. So if you're interested in the details, you can actually then probably read that more in detail. Standard dequantization, as we have seen above, assumes actually that we have always a uniform distribution, right? So this q uh, u given x up here actually assumes to be uniform. However, that might not be always the best case. So imagine, for example, up here we have visualized um, in case, for example, 0, 1, 2, 7 have all the same likelihood. However, just imagine we have a single pixel per image. And we now have different distributions of pixel values. So I have, for example, eight values, so between 0 and 7 again, and I have this probability distribution over these values. This can represent Gaussian noise, meaning that, for example, the most likely value I have is 2. However, as I have always some noise, I can also have values of 1 and 3, and my probability actually goes down there. So effectively, what I want to model is a single pixel, so a single in latent space, as a continuous distribution, so map this one here actually to a Gaussian. There you now see that this is actually quite hard. So as uh, 2, for example, the volume of 2 has now a different prior distribution, so something we don't see uh, if we model it. However, as we sample always when 2 is the value 2 more often, we actually get this distribution of p of x. And this distribution must be modeled by a flow. And you see these sharp borders between the value then of minus 1.1 which is hard for a model for flow to model because they have to be invertible. So they cannot just use completely nonlinear functions uh, to map x to z, right? And therefore, um, this is actually quite hard to do. An alternative here is to use variational dequantization, meaning that instead of learning q of, uh, instead of saying q of u is a uniform distribution, which gives us these hard borders, we can actually learn this distribution. So this distribution is then again a flow where we say, okay, we come from noise and we want to go to output between 0 and 1. And this distribution, which is currently a uniform, we actually learn. And this way you could, for example, then have smooth, smooth borders on the side. This is actually a very standard way of doing in normal learning flows and is crucial in image modeling for state-of-the-art performance. This is why I just wanted to show it to you. What you do is when you have, again, extra flows. Usually you have an external input, so if we do it on images, we sample some noise and run it through some flows, which has this external input, the original image, and then we take a resample basically a u. So therefore our u is then gain a distribution size 28 times 28 with a high dimensional flow to actually model interactions also between values, etc. And this is nothing else than our flow. So we have given some noise, dequantization noise, run it through a few flows, and then add it to our uh, Z as originally. This is the idea of variational dequantization. Again, if you're interested, um, you can also go into more detail of it.